What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and as I promised yesterday, I finally put together the list of potential game files and the code that I can present during my interview tomorrow. So this here is the entire list. Now, there's actually quite a few, but most of them are just little shit things that I don't think I'd want to show anyone. And some of them actually aren't my files, I didn't program them, they're like little engines that I downloaded for use. But anyway, I put together four of them just to give you guys a quick overview of kind of stuff that I did in the past. So the most simple one is here, the water simulator. So the water simulator is basically just a room where you click on something and it creates kind of like waves. And what I was doing at the time, because I'm not like a mathematics genius or anything like that, I was trying to use objects in proximity to the actual edges of these um, boxes that you can see under here, these polygons, and making them lift up, basically. So these little circles, as they move away, they're lifting up the edges of the polygons and kind of creating a wave effect, but obviously it doesn't work very well when there's only one of them floating along. There's like this random little ripple going over. So it, I don't know what I was trying to achieve at the time. Maybe I was just trying to create like a water effect, and I was just using this as the base. The next one was the push the box game. Quite simple, okay? So you basically, you got this little box dude, and you're like, hello, I'm the blue guy, and I gotta get the red boxes into the gray hole there. So basically, you know, you got them along here, you push it, um, you come down, you push that one over there, and it's like, boom, score it in, baby. And then you come back up here, and then you go there, and finally you push him down like that, and then it just goes to the next level, and it just gets more and more difficult. The next one, I kind of moved on to like two-dimensional space shooters. It's not really actually even a shooter. It's just kind of like a simulator. I had this real thing for a while where I was so fascinated about space. Actually, I still am. I don't know even what I'm on about. Like, it looks pretty plain right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the screen over towards the center of the bat. And what I was doing is I was working with gravity and things rotating around. So obviously, we've got the sun here. We've got the moon that's rotating around it. And we can see that there's other planets over here. And I also created like asteroids that would... Um, or comets, uh, comets, I should say, that would like appear randomly on the map and then they would fly around like this and eventually they'd get hooked in the gravity of something and they'd come back around and start rotating around that thing until they crashed into it. So you can see this one's slowing down. So gravity is obviously taking a pull on it and any second now it's going to loop around and it's going to shoot back down. So I was basically just playing with gravity and space simulation. I've always wanted to make like a, a, like a massive alt multiplayer online game that's like a space simulator type of thing um not like eve online if you guys have ever played eve online but uh, actually i'm not even sure what i wanted to do i was just playing around i love space okay this one got a little bit more complex actually got a fair bit more complex i programmed this without actually using any 3d so this is a 2d game that's made to look like it's 3d and as you can see it's actually a little bit of esperanto that's used this is about the time I started learning Esperanto maybe a year after I learned it. I can't remember exactly. But basically what there is is there's these suns or these stars, I should say. So they look like little dots here all around the place and rotates around them is basically planets. And you can see I didn't finish the graphical interface. It's just like this white thing. But I did create like this little map here so you could lock onto stuff and there's like a zoom over one there. And I also created kind of like a radar which makes no sense really in space. Like it wouldn't work like that. But anyway... And you can see this, it says like average distance in LS that stands for, I think it was, no, I don't know what the LS stood for. I can't remember anymore. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly towards one of these here. So I'm like using hyperspace at the moment, my own version of it. And I'm flying towards it. This, now it stops being a star and it turns into a sun as you can see. So I'm going to stop moving now. And you can see it's got like these little asteroids that actually rotate around it and everything. And if I fly towards this, it's actually a flat object. So the idea originally was if you got too close, you'd just like burn up and die. As you can see what's happening here, see it's going all spastic. I just never finished programming that. So basically, yeah, it was just designed so if you got too, it was meant to be designed. If you got too close, you just burn up and die. But what I did program is like the asteroids that fly around it, you can actually shoot them and lock onto them. That's where... See how it's got the little lock-on thing there? It's like beep, 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 lock-on, baby, boom, 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 boom. And remember, this is completely 2D. So then I'd go, okay, um, I want to go to that planet over there. So there's actually, I've got to show you guys this. Um, let me just find out where it is. Uh, there, no, there, no. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Stella, uh, Stella Sistemo de Yomo. Okay, Stella Sistemo de Zamenhof. This was about the time when I just started learning Esperanto, so I was just playing around. There's probably like Esperanto grammar mistakes and stuff. So I'm going to fly towards the star system of Zamenhof, basically. And you can see down the bottom, the average distance is like going berserk. 
So if I did this at normal speed, it'd be so slow. I'd be literally here for like an hour. I designed it that way because I was trying to create like a realistic simulation. I don't even know how long it's going to take me to get to this one. This is probably like the furthest one away. Okay, we're getting pretty close right now. So I'm going to start filming again from here. And you can see it's like white, the star, because it's so far away. But now the white starts to disappear and the sun itself appears. And then boom, there's the asteroid belt rotating around it. Now, a few of these have actually got like a blue planet rotating around them, but it's going to take me forever to find it because I randomly designed it to generate these maps. But that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys this. I'm actually really tempted to kind of, you know, refactor this entire thing and recreate this and just do it up because it runs so smoothly because it was designed for computers that are like a lot older. And I think I could actually like make something really cool for the Esperanto community with this. But, you know, that's if I get time. Um, if I'm not wrapped up in courses or whatever else, but yeah I just thought I'd show you guys that because this is what I'm gonna be presenting tomorrow um, If you've liked this video and you like the idea of like a space based Esperanto game um, Just let me know in the comments and if there's enough interest Maybe I'll do a couple of things in my spare time and do this up and just release it online for you guys Anyway, that's it if you've liked this video like it share it around sub to my channel if you haven't already And I'll see you all in the next video and if you're not there well then, I will name a dying star after you.